And so the last little bit of the frog discussion. All right, so this next bit involves a tremendous amount of ecology. And um, to put it in a very simple way, frogs, toads, salamanders, Sicilians, uh, their populations are crashing very, very rapidly. Right? There's a lot of factors in play. One, the climate change, uh, pollution in their ponds, uh, loss of habitat, that kind of stuff. But one of the biggest factors uh, is going to be a particular type of fungus. Right? I'm going to call this chytridiomycota fungus. Or sometimes they could just call it chytrid fungus. So it's a, it's a history behind this uh, this fungus and how ha how it has arrived into the, the new world. So if we go back in time, we go back you know hundreds of years. In Africa, there exists a little frog we call the African claw. The frog got little claws. Yeah. Um, hi. Personally, don't think it's that neat looking. Uh, it's, a, it's an aquatic frog, lives, spends all of its life in water, uh, big chunky legs for swimming, claws for, for, for defense, that kind of stuff. Well, um, I would say maybe around the 1980s, um, this frog was uh, discovered. It has been known, but they started to do more research on this frog. Um, it's got some very large chromosomes. It's very easy to work with genetically. So a lot of geneticists started to use Xenopus, the African clawed frog Xenopus, as a model for research. Right? So a lot of frogs were, were brought from, from Africa to the United States. Um, and once they were here, they also kind of took a, a little bit of, they got a little bit of popularity in the pet trade because you can keep them in an aquarium. You don't have to keep them in a terrarium. They're, uh, they're aquatic, so you can see them swimming, they look like little scuba divers swimming up and down. So the, the moral of the story, they were brought from Africa to the United States and to the different research institutions in Europe, research institutions in South America, Central America, North America. Um, what people didn't realize is that because it had been in Africa for so long, there was a immunity, if you will. There was a natural selective process that had taken place between the chytrid fungus and the clawed frog. So the clawed frog really has no uh, negative impacts, no, no symptoms when it's affected with this fungus. Right? But when they brought the frog, the frog could have had the fungal spores on its body uh, it could have brought soil from a uh, different location. They could have brought the, uh, the water. You know, so long story short, that chytrid fungus was brought over to the new world because of the, now the, uh, you know, the academic and the pet aspect of the Xenopus frog. So now we have, in the United States, we have this chytrid fungus. And a lot of individuals bought these frogs. They didn't understand these frogs get pretty big, pretty fast, and they start eating other fish in, in the tank. They start crawling out. And now little Johnny goes and gets the frog. Well, they're clawed frogs. They kick and they scratch. Little Johnny cries. He doesn't want the frog anymore. So, or, or the frog dies, yeah? So if the frog dies, a lot of times, you know, if a goldfish dies, you can flush it down the toilet. Well, these frogs are too big that you can't do that. So they're buried in the ground or uh, the frog's getting too big. Uh, the family with good intention decides I'm going to go take it to Ascarate and I'm going to put it in, in the water there, right? So uh, it can have a big place to live. Well, it's not the right habitat, first of all. And, and basically when this frog now is added to a native habitat, it brings all of the parasites, all of the fungal spores, any disease that it can have and introduces it now into its local environment. So in some places in Florida, because of hurricane damage, these frogs escaped also into uh, native habitats there. So long story short, again, we now have this fungus in the United States and it's not, it's not a nice scenario. So what the fungus actually does, it 
infects the epidermal layer of the skin, goes down into the thermal layer, and it causes severe inflammation. So it causes like inflammation, swelling of the skin. And well, you think, well, well, the swollen skin has got to be painful, yeah, but it shouldn't be that bad. Understand that the frogs are breathing through the skin. So it starts to kind of affect and make calluses and thickens that keratin layer of the skin, uh, thereby suffocating these, uh, these amphibians. So they literally suffocate because their skin gets inflamed and irritated by this fungus. So in very, very pristine areas, you'll have just massive die-offs. These frogs are just dying. They're not, they, don't, they haven't had that evolutionary history of co-evolving with the fungus. So it's the first time they've been exposed they have no defense against the fungus. So natural selection is in play and basically is not looking good for, for our, our native frogs right there. They're really having a huge negative impact. They're getting wiped out pretty bad. Um, uh, they, they call it the amphibian apocalypse, right? So you can see that red inflamed, irritated skin and that thickening of the keratin layer, which uh, it's it's basically a strategy of the frog to get rid of that, but in the process, it's it's depleting its own oxygen supply because uh, again, it can't survive with that thick skin. So it's a really sad situation. And again, this fungus is here. The fungus has spread to all types of water sources, and it's going to be one of these situations. Natural selection. The frogs that can adapt are going to survive and build some some sort of immunity. Uh, those that cannot are going to die off. And we have lost a lot of species already. So it's not a good time in the history of our planet to be a polar bear or to be a, uh, an amphibian, frog, or a salamander because of this chytrid fungus. So, so sad situation there. So with that, um, this is a really good stopping point now for discussion. And again, a lot more stuff to talk about, but uh, we did introduce the three groups, the anurans, the caudatans, and the apodin groups, the Sicilian salamanders and frogs. Uh, if we were in lab, we would kind of go a little bit deeper and look at some anatomical aspects of the frog, maybe frog dis uh, dissections, that kind of stuff. But um, I think the ecology is a lot more uh, novel, I think a lot more interesting. And with that, again, we'll, we'll call it a lecture and we'll call it a chapter. So this will conclude the material for the amphibians. Um, I'll post some other videos and then I'll start working on the reptile discussion for next week. So with that, you'll have a great one and I'll be seeing you all in the next lectures.